Good evening and welcome to News 20 at 5. I'm Damon Arnold. And I'm Ashley Flette. Investigation is still underway for a fire that occurred on Railroad Avenue Saturday morning. Tallahassee fire inspectors rummaged through the remains of the old Capitol Cash and Carry building that was ignited at 5 a.m. Tallahassee Fire Department was able to tame the flames within, hour, within an hour, according to officials. No one was injured, but two neighboring structures were damaged. Currently, fire officials are still investigating the cause of the blaze. Authorities are actively investigating a sexual assault. An FSU student reported to the school's police department that she was a victim of a sexual battery at an on-campus residential hall. The FSU PD is actively investigating this offense and is asking any person who may have been in contact with the suspect to contact 850-644-1234 or call Big Ben Crime Stoppers if you wish to remain anonymous. For more information on sexual violence prevention programs and resources, visit nomore.fsu.edu. A new medical marijuana facility is scheduled to come to town. Aaliyah Davis joins us with more on the center. Aaliyah? Thanks, Ashley. Tallahassee will be the new home of Medical Marijuana Treatment Center. Dr. Dorn, who has worked in hospital for the past 12 years, will open the treatment center within sight of the Capital Regional Medical Center. Excuse me. The state of Florida currently has 931 registered patients to receive medical marijuana treatment. The medical center is set to open its doors next week. Live in the newsroom, I'm Aaliyah Davis. Thank you, Aaliyah. A Gadsden County teacher is under investigation for possible drug use. The school deputy was notified by students and staff and a staff of a teacher who has been behaving as if he was under the influence. After an observation, the teacher was said to have been foaming at the mouth and having difficulty teaching his class. For his safety, the teacher was taken to a clinic while an assistant teacher took over the class. Authorities found a white powder in a plastic bag which tested positive for meth in the backseat of a patrol car. If you are driving around FAMU's campus, be prepared to take some detours as construction is, clearing, is gearing up again on FAMU Way, the extension and Capital Cascades Trail Segment 3. The next phase of beautification includes extending the roadway, trails and amenities from Pinella Street to Gamble Street. Over the next 24 months, work will move northeast from Gamble Street towards Pinella Street. And as for this week, travelers may notice some activity in the area as they sur as the survey crews and workers prepare for construction. Notices of any road closures or other potential impacts to surrounding areas will be advised in advance. Construction of a new solar farm is coming to Tallahassee. The City Commission received an update on the City of Tallahassee Solar Project Farm. Construction of a 20 megawatt facility, which will be located near the Tallahassee National Airport, will begin this spring. Once completed, it will be one of the largest solar farms in Florida, capable of producing 37 million kilowatt hours of electricity a year. Over at the Capitol, FAMU Rattlers came out in dozens to show their Rattler spirit and Damon call all the action. It's FAMU Day at the Capitol, and the Rattlers are here taking over the house. Rattlers like Dr. Robinson, Gregory L. Clark, and Barbara Cohen Pippen filled the house to express how important FAMU Day at the Capitol is to the university. This is always a, such a special time for us. Not that all during the year we're not supporting our university, but to have this day dedicated to making certain that the community, our legislators and others, know how we feel about our students and about our, our legacy at Florida Indian University. FAMU's leadership believes the university is headed in the right direction and they've implemented some new initiatives to make sure that that happens. Right now we're moving forward to the future, trying to do great things, enhance our areas of strategic focus, STEM, Additionally, with STEMs, we've added health care. As you know, with our School of Pharmacy, we just approved a, a doctorate in nursing this year. So we're moving forward to uplift all of our STEM areas, including our biomedical and engineering studies. If it wasn't FAMU, I, I, I know I wouldn't be here right now. I mean, FAMU took me, I didn't know I wanted to be in journalism school. I was just in general education, uh, taking the regular classes. And then I got to that point where I had to make a choice. I met Dean Kimbrough. And, 
she, she, she helped me get to here. Well, that's all we have for you today. It's been real and it's been fun. It's been real fun. So until next time, we'll see you then. Every year, the Capitol hosts a day of celebration for each Florida college or university. Coming up on News 20 at 5, see which state is moving ahead with, impe with its impeachment procedures for its governor. And find out the latest on the deadly shooting out in California. Stay tuned, you're watching News 20 at 5. Have you noticed the increase in colorful wildflowers throughout Florida? Thanks to sales of the state wildflower license plate, many important projects have taken root. Planting along highways and within communities, educating homeowners about the benefits of native landscaping, nourishing the pollinators that make other crops possible, and researching new ways to protect Florida's unique environment. With the state wildflower license plate, you can help add beauty and color to Florida. Now we have Shatanya Clark with our very own entertainment news, Shatanya. Thanks, Ashley. Happy Monday. This is Shatanya Clark with your latest in entertainment news. It's final. Jay-Z has pulled his music from Spotify and other streaming services to the service he co-owns, Tidal. Late last week, the service honored his request to remove most of his catalog, Billboard reports, excluding collaborations with other artists. In other news, Emmy and Grammy winning composer Alan Silvestri will be honored with the BMI Icon Award next month in Beverly Hills, California. BMI announced Monday that Silvestri will receive the award at the 2017 Film, TV and Visual Media Awards on May 10th at the Beverly Wilshire Hotel. Silvestri is a two-time Emmy winner and a three-time Grammy winner. And to end today, rapper Drake and EDM duo The Chainsmokers are the top contenders at the Billboard Music Awards with 22 nominations each. The 2017 award show will air live on ABC May 21st from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. That's all I have for your entertainment today. Join me Wednesday for more updates. Back to you all at the desk. What time is it? It is sports time. So With let's Shay see what's coming up. After the break, of yes. course. Stay <laughs> tuned. <laughs> Strike app. This app is the official game day program for FAMU Athletics. This app is also your source for stories, photos, videos, and everything related to Rattler sports teams right on your mobile device. Download it for free now. The FAMU Strike app. Welcome back to News 20 at 5. I'm Chase Simon with your sports. One school around the Big Ben will be playing next season with a new coach. Lincoln High School announced Quinn Gray as its new head coach. Gray is a former Florida a and Rattler and recently was the head coach of Mandarin High School. He left Mandarin after just one year to come back home. There are also some changes over at Florida a and The tennis courts received a new addition. A plaque dedicated to the life and legacy of tennis great Althea Gibson now graces the area. Gibson attended FAMU and was the first African-American of any gender to win a Wimbledon championship. She went on to win two Wimbledons and two U.S. tennis championships. In 1957, the Associated Press named her the Female Athlete of the Year. Continuing in Tallahassee news, the Sam Madison 7-on-7 North Florida Classic was held this weekend at the FAMU Intramural Fields. Ashley Jackson caught all the action. Three, two, one. Ah! Five years, 32 teams, and two days is a breakdown of the Sam Madison Southeast 7x7 Classic, which brung the talent to the competition. Athletes traveled from the southeast to Tallahassee competing against top talent, including the Cam Newton Foundation, coached by the Carolina Panthers quarterback, who made an appearance. Newton talks about the tournament being all about the kids and giving them the opportunity to play the game of football. We got kids based out of the, the greater Atlanta area, you know, um, and they sacrificed so much to be on this team. I had this person tell. Uh, you say how they get so much stuff, you know, when you're sacrificing so much with travel time as well as parents and, 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 and making that personal commitment to yourself. As a person who has went through it, I feel like they deserve, you know, uh, being rewarded. Director of Operations for the Foundation, Byron Kellum, says that during his time on the board, he has seen dedication and motivation from the athletes. Tenacity, uh, a lot of hard work. Um, a lot of motivation and what I what I appreciate about these young men is that they're not selfishly um, experiencing 
this opportunity for themselves. They're actually out here trying to get each other better. 16 teams went on to compete in the tournament, but only two advanced to the championship. The Cam Newton Foundation and the 352 Stars from Marion County, Florida, went hand-to-hand -hand on the field, but the Stars came too short of the victory, allowing the Cam Newton Foundation to win the national championship. Top athletes from 16 teams competed in the Sam Madison 7x7 tournament. The Cam Newton Foundation operates under the theme, Everyone Matters. And that's all for your sports today. I'm Shay Simon. We'll be right back after this break. For Sean and Shay, I'm Ashley. And I'm Damon Arnold. We'll see you next time. Have a great evening. We have a couple of Oscar winners here, a couple of Emmys, you feel me? Speaking to existing. 